What I'm going to do in this video is show you how to add on some information to a Jupyter notebook or some plugins for Jupyter, <clears throat> but only on a Windows machine. I'll have a second video for how to do this on Macs since they're just slightly different. So my assumption in this video is that you have Anaconda um, installed for Python and that you can um, open the Anaconda Navigator and the Anaconda Command Prompt. <clears throat> so from that Navigator, I have opened a Jupyter Notebook that I'm going to teach to my class. And so I added a couple of things onto the notebook to help me really prepare better reports and slideshows. So the first thing that um, I always need is a spell checker because I can't spell. And so <clears throat> I don't have the spell checker installed just yet, so I'm going to show you how to do that. And it'll add an extra button and will live check your spelling for you. Okay. And so what you will need to do if you're on a Windows machine is open an Anaconda prompt. Now, that is different from the command prompt because in a command prompt, it does not understand the um, command Anaconda. So in a command window, DOS, right? It doesn't understand when you just say conda, right? which is the, code, the, the sort of keyword to help install packages and update things. So we can't do it from here. Instead, I'm going to a -N -A <laughs> anaconda prompt, which is a separate little program from the navigator. And actually, it doesn't, unless I'm missing something, I don't think you can open it from within the navigator. <clears throat> so let's open that. And you'll see it looks just a little bit different. And so it says base here. It's, it looks very, very similar um, to a command prompt. But now, Honda will do things for us. So it kind of just tells you a little bit about it. So it shows me what that um, command does. So to install, what you want to do is that you will have um, pip installed, usually as part of installing the Anaconda distribution. But if you aren't sure, in this prompt, type pip. And if you get this window where you can see all the help stuff, you are good to go. Okay. We're just going to copy these three lines from my notebook here. Okay. And this is an extension, a notebook extension that will allow you to spell check. I'm just going to copy those, paste that bad boy, and let it run. And we'll actually run all three lines, although it automatically kind of started on the first one. So this is essentially um, <clears throat> what one would do to install packages. And it's told me a couple of little things here, like that I should upgrade pip. Which while that's running, um, it says it looked like it ran okay. So we could also see how to upgrade pip real quick. So the easiest thing to do, to Google it and you'll usually find the command pretty quick and that's actually the line of code that it gave us when it was flying by and so I would tell it to upgrade and I'm not sure if it did or not but that would be the line of code to try <clears throat> All right, so from there, do we have our spell checker? Well, I've already got this markdown, or I'm sorry, <laughs> too much R. I've already got this um, Jupyter Notebook running, so I will have to close it okay. and reopen it to see... And now you've got the ABC button. Okay, so you can turn on and off. And as you're working in a markdown block, you will see the highlighted code is, or the highlighted sections are what um, 
do not appear to be spelled correctly, and it actually does this live as you type. Uh, the other thing that I've installed is uh, doing the same thing. So I copied and pasted this conda install conda forge rise into this sort of window. <clears throat> is allows me to make slideshows. And so rise is a add-on that sort of works with JavaScript into creating slideshows. So real quick how that works. And let me turn this all off. So this is how you normally look at um, a Jupyter Notebook if you're kind of learning how to do this along with me. Learn as we go here. Um, and so you can add markdown chunks <clears throat> or code chunks, right? So once you get Rise installed, it'll be this little um, kind of graph icon. But there are a couple things you have to do first, and they have this on their tutorial page. But one thing you have to do is edit the notebook metadata. So you go to edit notebook metadata, not the cell metadata, the notebook metadata. Okay, this, and it's uh, across um, the entire notebook. And what I had to do was add this little three set line code in to the notebook metadata. And so um, what you'll see is it'll kind of, let me, uh, take this out briefly, is it kind of looked like this where um, it didn't have it at the end and I added it in. And so you might have to play with where it's added <clears throat> because if you had, sorry, let me show you this sort of thing, you would need to add the comma and put um, the rise code that they suggest you have to have and then make sure all your parentheses are closed correctly. And so this is kind of similar to CSS code if you're familiar with that, um, but it's JSON. And so we just need to add this little piece in there, but make sure you have a comma after the last um, <clears throat> set of closings or it will freak out. Once you're done, there's no save, you just hit edit. The other thing that you'll do is tell it where to break the slides. And so for that, you turn on view, cell toolbar, don't do metadata here. That's, uh, be sure you do the overall metadata. So view, cell toolbar, and then a slideshow. And then each one that you want to be the start of a new slide, you can mark a slide. And so some of these are blank because I want those to be on the previous slide. So these two will be on the same slide together. There are also subslides. Uh, subslides show up beneath it. So that'll make more sense in a second. Fragments are like um, reveal options. So like in PowerPoint, when you tell it to show each bullet one at a time, that's how fragment works. Skip means don't show it. Notes mean that they are note slides. So in present for kind of view. I set this up as just slides and left, um, pretty much didn't add any other fancy pants to it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but you can get kind of nuts with this. So to see it, what we'll do is we'll click this button. Okay. And then I wasn't, it'll start wherever you're clicked. So here's one, so I can hit the space bar to move on to the next slide and keep going. This is interactive, so you can actually open and start typing. I don't really want to change this, but let's say I was trying to show my class how to install. I could edit this so it is still working Python. Uh, and it's still just as slow. <laughs> so um, we could keep going. Right. So the, the fragment piece will show them kind of one at a time when you hit the space bar. The sub slide will actually allow you to go move down. So these little arrows here, left and right, mean that I only have slides, main slides. But if I have a sub slide, it actually kind of um, it gives you a down arrow here. So you can say this and then now this one. Okay. One issue I found is that scrolling is not a thing, and I looked at kind of how to do it, and it seemed like more of a disaster than I wanted to deal with. And so you can also just change the font size by using, <clears throat> I'm using control minus to make it a smaller or control plus to make it larger. And then you don't even have to show it in slideshow view. You can just use it as a regular notebook. 
Um, the other cool thing is once you set these up as slides, uh, rise or not, you can download it as uh, reveal.js slides. And so you can download it sort of similar to the way that um, Markdown HTML slides are, are knitted together. And so now I have a, a savable version of the slideshow as well. And I think this does scroll. Whoops, I got click happy there. So no, still no scrolling. Um, so if you wanted to see all of the text, you would just have to get smaller. And so those are the two main plugins that I've used so far that I think are helpful for Jupyter as I'm going and learning things here, uh, especially if you're using this uh, as an instructional tool and then that's how you install them. Just kind of the warning that you have, you should use the Anaconda prompt. It makes things a lot easier.